Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Lampworking 101.59. I wanted to start combining a couple different techniques and this bead is really cool and it has two of my favorite techniques in it. It combines the pseudo onion skin cane and a really gorgeous curtain of bubbles all the way around, nice and even. In order to get that pattern, we are going to use a florist's frog. These are really cool and invaluable for flame workers when it comes to specific techniques. You can find these in any florist store or find them online. But um, if you're interested in this technique and you don't have one of these, pick one up. They're really cool. And on that note, let's go ahead and get started. And I hope you guys uh, enjoy this and I hope you're all doing safe and well. And we'll see you next time in the dungeon. All right, we're gonna start this bead out by making the pseudo onion skin cane. And I just want to use clear for the inside and just add a little bit to the end of a punty. And then uh, you want about two inches. You can use less, but it's better if you use more. Anyway, I'm gonna add my first color. I'm gonna add three different shades of orange, just slowly trying to get them to stick together. I don't wanna to melt it in all the way just yet. I just wanna get the cane, the color on there, and then repeat that with it, all of these colors that I have. It's about six colors that I'm using, and then some black. And you notice while I'm adding this cane, you know, it doesn't stay straight the whole time. I do have to go in and gently flatten things out and keep everything nice and straight and even while I'm doing this whole process. So if you're going to attempt this, then take your time. If things start to droop or fall, then take a minute to push them back into place. Having the graphite paddle really helps because there are, you want to be able to push any spots out of there that might be a bubble. So it's nice to be able to flatten things out as you go. All right, now I have my blues and my oranges on there. I'm going to just put a nice stripe of black Hades on two sides. This is a great, really, really dense black. Be careful though, because it sometimes will play with your other colors um, and react with them. I do want to take the top off when I'm finished to bring all of those colors into one central point so I can add my punty. And I'm using a very, very tiny punty on that end. And the reason why is because when I heat the center, I'm going to give it a really nice twist and then pull it back down to itself at the cane end or at the punty end and then pull that little punty off. It's just a lot easier to pull that punty out when it's really small. And then it's just a matter of getting everything evened out again and putting on your other punty and we want to take the first punty off so we can kind of fix that area up a little bit, make it more even looking. This does take time to melt everything together so you don't have any bubbles. If you notice any really hot spots, there might be a bubble down inside. Uh, you kind of want to try to get that bubble to rise to the surface and pop. If you have bubbles in your cane when you're done, it may sputter uh, a little bit. It may not lay down nice and evenly. All right, once I have the whole bit of cane nice and even, I'll add my other punty rod here. And all I wanna do is get it into a kind of a football shape and then start to pull this out. And I'm gonna pull a nice straight cane. You can twist this if you want to, but it's a lot better if you pull it out straight. You can always twist it around uh, as you apply it. You know, it's funny because while I was filming this whole bead, 
um, I didn't realize that my camera shifted, so I got the best shot I could and just stuck with it. All right, here is that beautiful pseudo cane, pseudo onion skin cane that I have. It looks really cool. Every time you make one of these, it's gonna look different. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start this bead out. And I'm using a light, dusty pink for the center. You're really not gonna see this color if you have the cane really tightly applied onto it later on. But the first thing we wanna do is just make our simple barrel base bead. I'm gonna roll it out and just have a really nice shape to apply the cane to. And as I'm applying this cane, you'll notice that I am twisting it back and forth. I'm just wiggling it down as I go. And you can see the colors in the pattern also twist back and forth. This is gonna give you a really unique pattern to your bead. Now, once I have one side done, I'll flip it around and then I will apply the cane to the other side. So everything is filled in. This is a gorgeous background. It's almost hard to look at. It's, there's so much going on. All right, once we have that cane laid down, you wanna smooth your whole surface out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some clear on top of this. You can put the bubble surface on the actual color itself, but I just wanted a kind of a barrier in between. So the bubbles were kind of floating off of the surface. You can already see that pattern showing up. It is super cool. All right, so I'm going to grab my florist's frog. And when I use this, I, you know, I had, I have tried this a few different ways. And it was either just pressing down on four different sides of the bead onto the florist frog or rolling it on. And I noticed that if you just gently roll it on and take your time, you'll be able to find the indentations from the previous roll and just continue as you go. And this will give you a really nice curtain of bubbles. All right, let that cool down for just a second, just a split second. And then we're gonna add a nice um, layer of clear all over. And as you're adding this layer, you'll start to see the bubbles uh, emerge from underneath your glass. It really is beautiful to watch this whole process happen in the flame. All right, I'm gonna heat this whole thing up. Make sure that you have applied your clear everywhere you need to. You don't want to have any open areas. You just want a nice, even application. And then we're gonna heat this up and apply the clear one more time. And the second application of clear is really gonna push those bubbles. Here at the end, all I'm doing is just heating everything up really well. And I'm, you know, making sure the heat is on the edges, on the ends of the beads, and that will pull some of that clear closer to the mandrel. And now you see that beautiful curtain of beads here. Looks great. I hope you guys enjoyed this process and give it a try. And we'll see you next time in the dungeon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you.